What's up, everybody? Welcome to Robin's Nest. Today, I'm going to be talking about why I think Avalanche could become the default chain for crypto gaming next cycle. So before I get into that, guys, I just want to say if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. On this channel, we talk about everything crypto, all the way from investment theses to just what's going on day to day. So if you're interested in the crypto space, definitely hit that button um, so you can stay up to date with my videos. So, OK, guys. I'm very bullish on Ethereum, okay? Before I get into Avalanche and why I think Avalanche is gonna be huge in the gaming space, I am still very bullish on Ethereum and I think Ethereum is gonna do well. But I like to see what other chains are doing and I am a firm believer in a multi-chain future. I think that's gonna be the way things go. There's just gonna be chains that are designed to do things better in certain areas that Ethereum isn't designed to do better in. And that's okay. It's okay for us to have multiple chains and for them to specialize in a certain area. And I think one of those areas that we're going to see a lot of expansion in next cycle is going to be crypto gaming. And I think Avalanche is in a good position to capture a lot of that growth. Um, I think that this cycle we saw a lot of gaming projects come out, but none of them really had a full product, a full project and game release. They were all maybe sort of snippets of the game. They kind of got you in with like an alpha or a beta, um, but it wasn't really the full game release. And I think a lot of these games, the ones that stick around through the bear market, are going to be fully developed come next cycle and will have these full games. And so what I'm looking for is what chains are these games building on? Now, every chain has a game on it. You know, Ethereum has had quite a few. Polygon's had a few. But a lot of the major development that I'm seeing is actually coming to Avalanche. And the reason for that is because of Avalanche subnets, which are really important in crypto gaming because what it's going to allow people to do, for one, the Avalanche chain is super efficient and it's very cheap and that's very very important when gaming think about how many transactions you do in a game um, and how many you know if you've ever played any of the crypto games now how often you have to claim stuff and anytime you buy something you've got to do a transaction that all is all very very expensive on ethereum right now and even when eth 2.0 rolls out i just think that the eth chain has so much demand for it that it's still going to be a lot more expensive than a chain like avalanche and with avalanche subnets what you can do is you can create a subnet that benefits from the security of avalanche but allows you to also use your own token, your own game token as the gas in that economy um, and also isn't hindered by the use of the chain, right? So if Avalanche experiences a ton of use, like the C chain is just blowing up with, with growth, that isn't going to bog down the subnets. Your subnet is essentially a side chain that is independent of the main chain, but also is attached to the main chain in ways such as security and things like that. Now, I'm not, you know, able to go into the very, very small, finite details of how a subchain works. Um, I'm still, you know, learning myself. Um, but from everyone that I've spoken to and what I've seen is that, you know, for gaming projects in particular, these subchains are extremely efficient um, and allow for a lot of flexibility, which is what you need when you're building a game, right? Because games might be similar in some ways, but ultimately you want to have the freedom to kind of grow the game in your own unique way and use your creative abilities. Um, and you don't want to be hindered by the chain or the cost of the transactions. And again, I think that, that this is where Avalanche fits in better than any other chain. Now, I know a lot of people are advocates for Solana and Polygon. And, uh, you know, both those chains, I think, are going to do well, but I think they're going to do well in other areas because I think that each of them, I, I don't think that they do the efficiencies and the side chain sort of idea as good as Avalanche does. I mean, Avalanche is just highly adaptable. I, I really think of Avalanche more of like a modular chain. It's kind of, you can, you know, these sub chains are whatever you want to make them. Um, whereas you don't really get that same flexibility with something like Polygon or uh, or Solana. And, and you also don't get necessarily the same security. I know um, that's a big thing for a lot of people is decentralization. And of course, ETH is the king of decentralization when it comes to smart chains right now um, and smart contracts. But 
again, ETH is too expensive for gaming right now. It just it it just is what it is. Whether you're an ETH bull or not, it's everyone recognizes that if you had to do 50 transactions in a day for a game, that'd be way too expensive on Ethereum. So we got to look for other options. And Polygon, you know, Polygon's fast. It's great. It's cheap. Um, but you don't get the leisure of being able to use your own in-game currency as the gas fee. You don't, um, the bridge itself isn't very efficient in my opinion. Um, it takes too long to come back from the bridge. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can mess up bridging back from Polygon to Ethereum. And it's a very expensive to use that bridge. So I think that's sort of one thing holding back Polygon. Um, there's also the security factor. I'm not going to be on one side or the other. I, you know, a lot of people like to criticize Polygon security. I'm not, you know, again, I, that could, that's a very valid argument. Um, another, and then the, the issues with Solana, sorry, are more along the lines of its security as well. I think a lot of people, you know, it's, it's Solana has gone down multiple times. Um, and, and people are just sort of afraid of that piece. Now, again, it's not to say it's not a good chain and that they're working these things out. I totally get it. Um, I just don't think, you know, crypto gaming, I think Avalanche is going to have the corner in this market. It's got a very efficient bridge. The gas fees are super cheap. Um, and then again, subnets allow for flock, uh, a lot of flexibility for these game developers. So that's what I'm keeping an eye on when it comes to Avalanche. Again, I am I am very interested in keeping an eye on the Avalanche ecosystem as a whole. Um, I think that the Avalanche team is extremely solid. They're all very, very smart. Um, and it also benefits, it's not, again, as decentralized as Ethereum, but it's still pretty decentralized and it's a very secure chain. We've seen time and time again, it be tested. Um, and I think it has yet to go down. I, if it has, I definitely did not catch that. Um, but it's also been always running very efficiently. Um, transactions process super fast, super cheap. Uh, and again, it's really easy to use. And I think, you know, when you're making a video game, it's very important that the onboarding for that game is frictionless. You don't want a lot of friction when you are starting a game, right? You want the new players to be able to enter and play your game easily. That's how you're going to onboard new players. So if you have to explain to users how to go from Ethereum and take the Polygon bridge and go to Polygon and you know use use your Matic tokens as gas and get Matic and or Solana same thing um, you know that's going to be tough but when you look at something like Avalanche it's already integrated into a lot of checks a lot of central exchanges so you know someone can go from from uh, Coinbase and then they can send their Avalanche right to their Avalanche wallet um, and go and play the games that they want to play. Um, you can do that through C chains and then they're working on adding subnets as well. So it's it's a very easy process to get on to the Avalanche chain. And uh, I think, again, as time goes on, this adaptability is just going to grow further. And so, again, a lot of these gaming projects are heading that way. And we're talking big names. I have seen big name developers out there. Um, some of them are still like in the infancy stages. So I'm not sure, you know, how far along their projects have come. Um, but I, again, I've seen like actual game developers um, starting up in the avalanche ecosystem which is which is awesome that's fantastic to see um and i'm really excited to see where this goes because i think that this solves first of all this is a huge growth opportunity for crypto um and the avalanche ecosystem and i think this crypto solves a lot of problems in the gaming world today if you, again if you're into gaming you can see sort of the flaws that are out there um when it comes to you know hackers and like all these other sorts of things crypto can, is a way that they can attack that problem um and, and prevent them in the future and so it's it's a benefit there's a lot of value there for both sides um and again i am very interested in watching avalanche and how this plays out for them so anyways guys just an idea that popped up in my head that i don't necessarily think a lot of people are, are paying attention to um again even if you're bullish on any other chain i think it is totally worth watching i think it's silly to be you know i guess cultized into one of these chains and then just knocking on other chains even though there could be really great growth opportunities i mean ultimately if you're here to make money you want to pay attention to where the money is going so um any guys anyways guys that's definitely a place i would keep an eye on it's it's a place that i'm watching and looking for um and i will continue to keep you guys updated as i hear more about the gaming development on avalanche um again this is more or less just an idea i wanted to share with you guys so i hope you like the video and i will catch you next time